you have now graduated to section four of your guided notes, adding and subtracting fractions. When you're adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator, all you need to do is add or subtract the numerators only and bring over the denominator. And again, always be sure to simplify your answer. Now I know section three was all about multiplication and division, and we did everything with both numbers. With addition and subtraction, you cannot add the denominators. You cannot subtract the denominators. You want the denominators to be the same. You leave them alone. You only deal with the numerators. So this is different than multiplication and division. Follow closely. So right here, we have two fifths plus one fifth. Now, before you can add or subtract a fraction, you need to make sure that you have like denominators. And these first three examples are awesome because in all three of them, the denominators are the same. So when you see you have like denominators, you're going to add the numerators and bring over the denominator. So the result of this is three fifths. It is not three tenths, I promise you, it is three fifths. Can you tell the mistakes we see a lot? It's a common misconception. <laughs> Don't be fooled. All right, so three fifths, nothing goes into three or five except for one, so we're good. The next one, five sixths minus one sixth. Again, when you subtract, denominators need to be the same, these are. So I'm going to subtract my numerators only and bring over the denominator. Five minus one is four and bring over the six. And with four and six, two is their GCF. It's the largest number that divides into each. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. Last one, we're back to addition again. And remember dad, don't add the denominators, just add the numerators. Bring over the denominator. Four plus five is nine bring over the seven, and yes, this is improper. This one I think we can do right in our noggins. Seven goes into nine once, there are two left over, and out of seven, that denominator stays the same. All right, Mrs. Sullivan is going to take you through a few more examples with unlike denominators. This is everybody's favorite, we just know it. <laughs> But in all honesty, we know this is something that you still have trouble with, and it's why we thought we needed to include it on here, because you will be working with this kind of stuff this year in seventh grade, and we need to make sure that you can handle it. So again, unlike multiplication and division, you must have like denominators in order to add or subtract fractions. You must find the least common multiple, or LCM, to create fractions with like denominators. Then you're going to solve the problems like the examples above, and remember, our acronym DAD. Don't add denominators. Once you've gone through all this work to get the denominators the same, don't go changing it again. All right, so here we go. Two thirds plus three fourths. First question, do they have the same denominator? No. So what you need to do, least common multiple means the smallest number that both three and four go into. So not what goes into them, what they go into. So we're gonna just multiply them out. You could always use a multiplication chart with this. Look at your row with the threes and the fours and just kind of scan through the row and this is what the row would look like. Three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, times four is 12. I could keep going, but I know that I've already hit one that they're gonna have in common. And you might know too. Four times one is four, times two is eight, times three is 12. The minute you get one that they have in common, that means that's their LCM. And my job here is to change each of these fractions into fractions with a 12 in the denominator. So I'm gonna do that right down here and then we'll finish the problem up top. So I'm gonna change 2 thirds into 12ths. And I'm gonna change 3 fourths into 12ths. I'm sure you've seen this before. How do I get thirds into twelfths. What do I do to three to get a twelve? I multiply by four. So I have to do the same thing to the top. What is two times four? It's eight. So I'm really taking, instead of two thirds, eight twelfths. Now I'm going to change three fourths into twelfths. How do I get a twelve from four? I multiply by three. So I have to do the same thing up here. What is three times three? That's nine. So instead of 3 fourths, I'm going to use 9 twelfths. Now I have the same denominator, and it's just like the problems up top. So I'm just going to add straight across. 8 plus 9 is 17. Keep that denominator alone. After all that work, are you kidding me? Don't go messing with it now. We're going to do this one in our head. It's improper. 12 will go into 17 once. 
and there are five left over, so that's one and five twelfths. So I'm going to squeeze that in here. What a mess. But it's important to show all of these steps. All right, so look at the one right below it. We have mixed numbers, five and three-fourths, and then we have two and one-half. Now, the whole numbers are going to stay the same, but what I want to mess with a little bit are these two fractions, three-fourths and one-half. So I want to look at those two denominators, and I'm going to find their least common multiple. Some of you might be able to look at this and say, oh, I know that right off the top of my head, because what are some multiples of four? Four, four times two is eight. I can keep going, but look what happens. When I do my multiples of two, two times one is two, two times two is four, oh, this one I can leave alone, and that's always great when that happens, but I'm going to change one half into fourths, and you might already know it. How do I get from halves to fourths? I have to double it, so I'm going to do that up here. One times two is two. So I'm going to take my two whole numbers and add those together. Five plus two makes seven, and now I'm going to take three-fourths, I'm going to show that down here, three-fourths plus two-fourths makes five-fourths. Uh-oh, I need seven and five-fourths. So I'm going to write that right here, but you might notice something. Isn't this already more than one? Well, seven plus one more makes eight, and that means I have one-fourth left over. That one may have just flown over some heads. We'll see. All right, because this topic is so much fun, we decided that we needed little breaks in between. So I'm going to do the next two with you, and we'll switch it off again. These two are subtraction, and I'm hoping that you see that the rules are pretty much the same. You still need the like denominators, except now we're going to end up subtracting the numerators at the end instead. So 5 sixths, 3 eighths, unlike denominators. So let's find a like denominator by counting by 6 and counting by 8. So we have 6, we have 12, we have 18. We have 24. I'm going to stop because I know all of my multiplication facts, <laughs> and I don't want to keep going with this list. So if you know yours, you may not have to do this. We have 8. We have 16, and ding, 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 we have 24. So 24 is the first number they have in common. That makes it the LCM. I now want both of them to have a new denominator of 24. So we have the 5 6 that we want to convert into 24, and we have the 3 8 that we want to convert into 24. 6 times 4 is 24, so that means I need to take 5 times 4, and I get 20 24 /ths. So 5 6 is really 20 24 /ths for this problem. 8 times 3 is 24, and 3 times 3 is 9, so I'm going to subtract 9 24 /ths. Now it's in the form that we need. We have like denominators, so I'm just going to subtract across the top. 20 minus 9 is 11. Bring over that denominator, and it's 11 24 /ths. There's not a number other than one that goes into both of those, so ba-bam. Simplest form, all done. All right, look underneath that, the mixed number ones. And again, we don't need to change these. Um, when you're adding and subtracting, just leave those alone for now. We just need to worry about getting a common denominator with the fraction part. So we have a 5, we have a 3. Counting by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20. I count by threes, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, should I keep going? No, no, no stop, please, 15, 15. So the first number they have in common is 15. That means I want to change 4 fifths into 15 and I want to change 1 third into 15 So 5 times 3 is 15, 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, 1 times 5 is 5. So the problem that we're actually doing is 3 and 12 fifteenths minus 1 and 5 fifteenths. I kept those whole numbers the same and just changed the fraction part. All right, once you get to this step, go ahead and subtract your whole numbers. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now we're going to take 12 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths. 12 minus 5 is 7. Bring over the denominator. Nothing's improper. Nothing needs to be simplified. We are done. Next two examples. Back to me. All right. Five ninths plus one third. This might be one where some of you who are really good with your multiplication facts can identify right away 
that the least common multiple is glaring at you in the face right now. So if you look through your multiples of 9 and 3, what does 9 go into? 9, 18, 3 goes into all those too, but look at what happens. 3 times 3 is 1, or is 3, 6, 9. Yeah, we don't have to mess with the 5 ninths. We're just going to leave that alone, but we have to change 1 third into ninths. 3 times 3 makes 9. 1 times 3 makes 3 ninths. So we're really taking 5 ninths plus 3 ninths, which is 8 ninths, already reduced. All right. This is our favorite problem. <laughs> this is the doozy. Mrs. So. Sullivan drew the short straw. I did. <laughs> How did this happen? This is, just buckle up, because this one's a good time right here. All right. So, again, we're not going to worry about the whole numbers that is sitting in front of the fraction here. We're just going to worry about our sevenths and our six. So, you might know, like Ms. Trombley said, if you know your multiplication facts, you can stop now and use that number. But if you don't, go through your multiples. Seven... 14, 21, 28, 35. I'm going to stop here because I know this. Yes, 6, 12, 18, 24, 25, 26, 42. All right, so I'm going to change both of these. Oops. I'm going to change both of these into fractions with a 42 on the bottom. So 3 sevenths into 40 half, 40 seconds. 7 times 6. 3 times 6, so that makes 18 40 seconds. And then I'm going to change 5 6 into 42s times 7 times 7, that makes 35. All right, so what I'm really doing here is 4 and 18 40 seconds plus 35 40 seconds. Do you need a break? Why don't you go get a... Go get a drink of water, take a bathroom <laughs> break. <laughs> we'll be here when you get back. All right, so four is the only whole number in the problem, so we're going to just bring that straight over, and we are going to leave that denominator alone. Again, all that work, don't mess with it now. I need 18 plus 35. That's 53. Oh, you might notice something else here in this problem, that... 53 40 seconds is improper. That's more than a whole. So I don't know if I should do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So this actually turns out to be 1 and 11 40 seconds. If we think about it, 42 goes into 53 once, and there's 11 left over. I'm going to add that to the 4 that's already there. So now look at this. 4 plus 1 and 11 40 seconds. What's 4 plus 1? 5. In 1140 seconds. Are you sweating? I am. Good times. All right. Have fun with section four in your packet.